Hello, dear students. I would like to introduce population interaction. So today, I plan to introduce population interaction. You know already meaning of population, which I put forward once in the initial period. Population is the group of organisms. Population is the group of organisms belongs to same species. Population is the group of organisms belongs to same species where even you have come across the definition of organisms and species. Organism is the basic unit of ecological hierarchy which is continuously exchanging the material and information with the surrounding environment. It is the basic unit of ecological hierarchy which is continuously exchanging the material and the information with the surrounding environment. Species is the basic unit of classification and the word species is applied to a distinct kind of organism where all the members are similar and they can interbreed each other to produce a fertile offspring. Population interaction. Population is a group of organisms belongs to same species. In nature, plants, animals and microbes cannot live in isolation. In nature, plants, animals and microbes cannot live in isolation. They are interacting with each other to in various way to form biological community in nature plants animals and microbes cannot live in isolation they interact in various way to form biological community in that interaction some may be benefited or it may be harmed or it may be an neutral interaction may be beneficial or it may be an harmful or it may be an neutral Beneficial is denoted by plus, plus means benefited, harm means negative, neutral or no benefit, no harm is designated as zero. Look over here. In nature, plants, animals and microbes cannot live in isolation. They interact in various way to form a biological community. In interaction, some may be benefited or harmed or it may be an neutral. Interaction may be beneficial or it may be an harmful or it may be an neutral. Beneficial is denoted by plus, harmful is denoted by minus, zero means no harm, no benefit. But there are many biological interactions are there. But for your syllabus, they are quoted six. Amensalism, parasitism, competition, commensalism, mutualism and predations. Actually, many interactions are there. But very interesting six they are put forward for your syllabus. Predation, mutualism, commensalism, competition, parasitism, amensalism. So today, I plan to first introduce commensalism, mutualism, then you are going to study amensalism and parasitism. Okay. Now look over first commensalism.
So dear students, please remember this line. What example they are quoted in the new NCRT that you have to prepare for the point of examination. So in commensalism, it is an interaction where one species is benefited. In commensalism, it is an interaction where one species is benefited, another species is not neither benefited nor harmed. In commensalism, one species is benefited or one partner is benefited, another one is not neither benefited nor harmed. In commensalism, one partner is benefited, another partner is not neither benefited nor harmed. So, you can denote it as an positive and zero. One is benefited, another one is not neither benefited nor harmed. Now look over beautiful examples what they are quoted in the new NCRT syllabus. Cattle egret with that of the grazing cattle. Cattle egret with that of the grazing cattle. When the livestock, it may be an cows, buffaloes or horses, when they will graze the grass or when they will feed on the grass, they cause movement that will stir up various types of insects. Cattle egret is a bird which is moving or which is following the cattle will catch and feed on the insects. Here benefit is there for the cattle egret but there is no benefit nor harm is there for the grazing cattle. Haldi urori doro the common agi example no dritar. Yawa gona sala akala golu eme golu holda li hulla na tinta irta be. A one day kare ninto hulla na tinna la moment akta irta be. Adar jote hula golu kora hara gade barta irta be. Gona sala right side barta be, left side barta be, front to back yalla kare moment akta irta be. Adar jote white color beautifully danta birde cattle egret. Adhen madatya hula golan hidu kompeto tinna te. Ili benefit ero do egret ge. आदरे ये ना आकल गुड़ ये में गुड़ याव दे बेनिफिट नहीं ला हार्मो कोड़ा इल्ला लुक ओवर हियर माय पॉइंट वंस अगेन कैटल इग्रेट विद दैट ऑफ़ द ग्रेजिंग कैटल्स व्हेन द लाइफ स्टॉक्स इट में बी एन काउस बफेलोस और इट में बी एन हॉर्सेस आर ग्रेजिंग ऑन द ग्रास इट कॉसेस मूवमेंट दैट विल स्टर or which is following the cattle will catch and feed on the insects. Here benefit is there for the cattle egret but there is no benefit nor harm is there for the grazing cattle. Look our second example, clone fish living in the clone fish living in the stinging tentacles of sea anemone. Clone fish living in the stinging tentacles of sea anemone. Here, clown fish is protected by the predators, but there is no benefit nor harm is there for the sea anemone. Look over here, second example, clown fish living in the stinging tentacles of sea anemone. Clown fish is protected from the predators. Here, benefit is there for the clown fish. But there is no benefit nor harm is there for the sea any money. Next third example, orchids as an epiphyte on mango trees. Epiphytes, the plants which grow on another plants, plants which grow on another plant without causing any harm to the supporting plants. One such an example is orchids as an epiphytes, they will grow on the branches of mango tree. Here benefit is there for the orchids but there is no benefit nor loss is there for the mango tree. Same way barren culls they will grow as an epizoon on the back of whales. Barren culls will grow as an epizoon on the back of whales. Whales is a whale is a actually mammal. Whales in a male bhagadali, nimiga star star iddanta structure gold in siktave, a vella, barrenkles gold, other male beldirtave, barrenkles as an epizoan on whales. That ends commensalism. Next, I will switch over to mutualism.
okay now look over next matter mutualism in mutualism both of the species are benefited mutualism is also called as symbiotic association in symbiotic association both the partners or both the species are benefited mutualism is also called as symbiotic association where both the partners will get benefit one such beautiful example which you have come across in pc first year chapter mineral nutrition is rhizobium bacteria with that of the root nodules of higher plants or leguminous plants look over here in mutualism or in symbiotic association both the partners will get benefit one such a classic example which are come across in pc first year is rhizobium bacteria with that of the root nodules of leguminous plants rhizobium bacteria has the capacity to fix the free atmospheric nitrogen and it will supply nitrogen to the plants in turn plant will supply carbohydrate as a source of energy rhizobium will fix the free atmospheric nitrogen and supply this nitrogen to the plants but in turn plant will supply carbohydrate as a source of energy or as a source of food but this example you should not quote here okay so in second year don't quote this example because they have put forward many interesting examples mutualism are of two types proto cooperation and symbiosis in proto cooperation both the partners will get benefit but the association is facultative in proto cooperation both the species or both the partners will get benefit but the association is facultative now question arises what is the meaning of facultative one can live separately one can live separately illon point ni artha madkobeku nimdu mattu namma association nimdu andre vidyarthigalu mattu teacher association hagirutte andre illi ibrigu benefit irutte ಬಟ್ ನಿಮ್ಮನ್ನು ಬಿಟ್ಟು ನಾವು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ದಿವಸ ಇರ್ಬೋದು ಯಾಕಂದರೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಿದೆ ಕೋವಿಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಬಂದುಬಿಟ್ಟು ನಿಮ್ಮನ್ನು ಮತ್ತು ನಮ್ಮನ್ನು ಪೂರ್ತಿಯಾಗಿ ಸಪ್ರೇಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದೆ ಅದು ಫ್ಯಾಕಲ್ಟೇಟಿವ್ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಪ್ರೋಟೋ ಕೋಆಪರೇಷನ್ ಬೋತ್ ದಿ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ನರ್ಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಬಟ್ ದಿ ಅಸೋಸಿಯೇಷನ್ ಈಸ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕಲ್ಟೇಟಿವ್ ಫ್ಯಾಕಲ್ಟೇಟಿವ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಲೀವ್ ಸಪ್ರೇಟ್ಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಈಸ್ ಹರ್ಮಿಟ್ ಕ್ರ್ಯಾಪ್ ವಿತ್ ದಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಸಿ ಅನಿಮನಿ hermit crab and sea anemone next is symbiosis in symbiosis both the partners will get benefit in the second condition both the partners will get benefit but the association is obligatory obligatory means one cannot live separately one cannot live separately two examples are there here which they have put forward even in pc first year also one is mycorrhizae it is an symbiotic association between the fungi with that of the higher plants fungi will absorb nutrients and supply to the plants in turn plant will supply carbohydrate as a source of food look over here example for the symbiosis mycorrhizae it is an symbiotic association between the fungi and roots of higher plants fungi will absorb the nutrients and supply to the plants in turn plant will supply carbohydrate as a source of energy or as a food same way we come across one more example in first year lichens or you can pronounce it as an lichens lichens or lichens it is an symbiotic association between the algae and fungi it is an symbiotic association between algae and fungi here fungi will absorb the water and supply to the algae algae in turn will supply food for the fungi i hope that you have remembered one point <coughs> 
lichens or lichens are sensitive to the air pollution lichens or lichens are sensitive to the air pollution therefore they are not noticed in the cities or in other way lichens are the indicators of air pollution lichen or lichen is an symbiotic association between the algae and fungi fungi will absorb water and supply to the algae in turn algae will supply food for the fungi lichens or lichens are sensitive to the air pollution therefore they are not noticed in the cities or in other words lichens or lichens are the indicators of air pollution now look over few more examples symbiotic association between plants and animals symbiotic association between plants and animals actually plants will need the help of animals plants need the help of animals for pollination now look over another example it is an symbiotic association between the plants and animals plants is in need of animals for pollination and dispersal of seeds plants will need the help of animals for pollination and dispersal of seeds in turn plants will provide rewards in turn plants will provide rewards in the form of pollen and nectar for pollination nutritious fruits nutritious and juicy fruit for the dispersal of seeds look over here third example is plants and animal association plants will need the help of animals for pollination and for dispersal of seeds in turn plant will provide reward or fees in the form of pollen and nectar for pollination juicy and nutritious fruit for the dispersal of seeds juicy and nutritious fruit for the dispersal of seeds you know pollen already in sexual reproduction in flowering plant you come across nectar is a sugary fluid it will attract the insects for the purpose of pollination one sala neeve example kuda nodirtiri ni manelli ondu vele bevin gida idre yavdo gidi galu bandu athava yavdo ondu bird ba en madutte badam hannanna tandu tindirte melgadi iddanta coat anna tindu olagadi iddanta beejana ni manelli ogad bitirte okay andre juicy ಮತ್ತು ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಯಶ್ ನ್ಯೂಟ್ರಿಷನ್ಸ್ ಕೊಡಿ ಇದ್ದಾಗ ಮಾತ್ರ ಅವ್ರು ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫರ್ ಮಾಡ್ತವೆ ಇಲ್ಲಾಂದ್ರೆ ಮಾಡಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಅರ್ಥ ನಾವು ಅಂಡರ್ ದಟ್ ಒನ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ದ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಕೋಟೆಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ಮೋರ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಇಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಫಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟೈಟ್ ಒನ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ರಿಲೇಷನ್ಶಿಪ್ Korea. <clears throat> in case of fig and wasp you can easily notice tight one to one relationship tight one to one relationship is noticed between the fig with that of the wasp now question arises what is this tight one to one relationship 
fig plants are pollinated only by the wasp that is what we know as tight one to one relationship fig and wasp will show one to one relationship tight to one to one relationship tight to one to one relationship means fig is pollinated only by the particular wasp so generally wasp will lay the eggs wasp will lay the eggs female wasp will lay the eggs in the locule of fig with the help of ovipositors female wasp female wasp will lay the eggs in the locule of the fig with the help of ovipositor while depositing eggs pollen grains are shed when it will visit another fig to lay the eggs it will no doubt bring cross pollination in turn fig will provide certain developing certain developing seeds as a source of food for the larvae look over here in this case both the partners will get benefit wasp will lay the eggs in the locule of the fig you know already cavity of the ovary cavity of the ovary containing the ovule is called as locule female wasp will lay the eggs in the locule of fig with the help of ovipositor while depositing eggs pollen grains are shed on the body when it will visit another flower no doubt it will bring cross pollination in turn fig will provide suitable place to lay the eggs second immature seeds are given to the wasp as a immature seeds or undeveloped seeds are utilized as a source of food for the larvae here both the partners will get benefit now look over last one more example for another interesting example mediterranean orchid of rice mediterranean orchid of rice will show a sexual deceit it will show a sexual deceit for pollination by honey bees mediterranean orchid of rice will show a sexual deceit to pollinate by the honey bees very interesting matter where one petal you know already members of the corolla are called as petals where one petal is modified into female honey bees like in size color and marking one petal of this orchid is modified into female honey bee like in size color and marking male honey bees are get attracted perceiving it as a female it will go for pseudo copulation during pseudo copulation pollen grains are shed when it will move to other flower of the orchids no doubt it will bring cross pollination in the mediterranean orchid of rice one petal is modified into female honey bees like in size color marking to attract male honey bees male honey bees 
or get confused thinking that it is an female honey bee they will go for pseudo copulation during pseudo copulation pollen grains are dusted when it will visit another orchids it will bring cross pollination that ends mutualism over parasitism it is a non mutual interaction it is a non mutual interspecific interaction where the smaller species so called parasite will derive the food and shelter from in or on the body of the larger species so called host in parasitism it is an interaction non mutual interaction where the smaller species so called parasite will derive the food and shelter from in or on the body of the larger species so called host based on this definition it is clear that parasites are of two type look over the definition in parasitism it is a non mutual interaction where the smaller species so called parasite will derive the food and shelter from in or on the body of the larger species so called host based on the definition it is clear that parasites are of two types ectoparasites and endoparasites look over the name carefully will get an idea ecto outside endo inside ectoparasites are present outside the body of the host or they will feed on the outer surface of the host ectoparasites are present outside the body of the host whereas endoparasites are present inside the body of the host example for the ectoparasite is lice ticks cascuta as an ectoparasite on hedge plants endoparasites example is ascaris lumbricoides or ascaris megalocephalus ascaris lumbricoides or ascaris megalocephalus many adaptations are noticed in the parasites like suckers lack of digestive system lack of unnecessary sense organs high reproductive capacity many 
adaptations are noticed in the parasites like suckers or you can call it as a adhesive structures lack of digestive system lack of unnecessary sense organs and high reproductive potentiality because their life cycle is complicated they need one or more host or vectors to complete their life cycle look over here parasites are of two types ectoparasites and endoparasites ectoparasites are present outside the body of the host whereas endoparasites are present inside the body of the host example for the endoparasite is ascaris lumbricoids or ascaris megalocephalus ectoparasite example is lice ticks mites and even cascuta is an example for plant ectoparasite it is noticed on the hedge plants many adaptations are noticed in the parasites like suckers lack of digestive system lack of sense organs unnecessary sense organs reproduction high reproductive potentiality because their life cycle is complicated because their life cycle is complicated they require one or more host or vectors to complete their life cycle i'll provide you one example liver fluke will require two hosts to complete their life cycle that is snails and fishes they require one or more host or vectors to complete their life cycle one or more host more host i will provide you example liver fluke it requires snail and fish to complete their life cycle so malarial parasite plasmodium requires anopheles mosquito as an vector last matter is brood parasitism brood parasitism example is cuckoo brood parasitism look over this matter has appeared many times in the examination parasitic bird will never build the nest brood parasitism in brood parasitism parasitic bird will never build the nest but it will lay the eggs in the nest which is built up by the host host will take care of the eggs it will incubate and even it will take care of the young ones but a question arises in your mind why the host bird cannot identify the egg of parasitic bird because during the course of evolution they have produced the eggs which will looks 100% like that of the host in size shape color combination look over here once again in brood parasitism parasitic bird never built the nest but it will lay the egg in the nest which is built up by the host host will incubate and take care of the young ones but a question arises why the host cannot identify the egg of the parasitic bird because during the course they have produced or they have evolved in such a way that the egg of the parasitic bird will looks like an egg of egg of the parasitic bird will looks like an egg of the host in size shape patterns etc as a result host cannot identify them a classic example is cuckoo kannadalli kogile ant karitare urdu it is called as koyal so that ends parasitism 